Hello everybody, what is going on? This is Marcus and we are back for another episode of Marcus on Top. I hope you had a very great weekend. Um, probably you enjoyed some Pokemon streams or some more Pokemon YouTube content. Uh, we did see the Dublin Regionals finish with Star KO William Tansley finishing in first place using the Big Six. And on YouTube we also saw a little bit of action as my good friend Wolf Glick decided to finally also start his channel on YouTube. I will of course link that in the description below. So I guess if you are subscribed to my channel, you probably also want to subscribe to his channel. Um, yeah, looking into the future, there will definitely be some more like collaboration stuff going on, of course. And yeah, that was also like part of the reason why we didn't see any uh, we didn't see with Wolfie because Wolfie was getting ready to start recording on his own, like figuring out some settings with his capture card and so on. So yeah, he I don't know spent his free time in that way. Um, yeah, we will see what we just see with Wolfie or how that is um, going to continue. But first, let's play some more Wichi C16 right here as we are finding Luke with a rating of 1758 um, from the US who is rocking a dual Primal team. Um, no Trick Room option though, instead we do see a potential Tailwind here with the Talonflame or Thunder Wave most likely going to be on that Thunderous. Uh, we are still using Duffalo's team uh, since I just can't get enough of level 13 Smurl and level 49 um, Groudon. So yeah, if my opponent had like a trick room option, then 49 would be really good here to have on the ground since most of the time, uh, yeah, sometimes even both Kyogre and the ground um, can be at zero speed IOEs and um, yeah, bra Brave or Brave. What's up with those nature names? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so yeah, against uh, this kind of team though, it's pretty unlikely that my opponent has min speed. Though, um, yeah, you, you're losing quite some points actually, like it's, I don't know, like 4 points in HP and then some def, some special defense and of course also attack. But um, yeah, we can take that. So, I don't see too much threatening stuff um, on my opponent's team that can actually deal with the Dialga and Landorus team uh, lead that Duffalo seems to prioritize. Um, not really too much of a reason to bring Kangaskhan here, I mean, it would be fine against the Primals, but... There's a Frothorn, there's Salamence, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, it's like, it doesn't look like Kangaskhan will just instantly win the game, for example, but it almost never looks like that, since most people should be prepared for Kangaskhan. And also Crow, but not really doing too much, uh, as we are, basically, like, every single mon on my opponent's team can kind of deal with Crow, but, so we're going with Dialga and Landorus, um, let's just see what our opponent throws at us here, um, as we're seeing a Salamence and Ground lead. I think we might have faced that in an earlier episode where our opponent had big six or like a big six kind of team. And back then I think I had Crobat. I'm not entirely sure though. It's been a while that I played Pokemon. <laughs> a couple of days at least. So um, the question is can he want it KO or Dialga? Uh, if he goes for like say Earth Power and Draco Meteor, then he would definitely knock out that Dialga. But, yeah, he also has to care about the Landorus. Maybe he knows about this team's strategy, though. Since, yeah, with the level 13 and level 49, it's pretty, pretty telling in Team Preview that you are trying to set up a Trick Room. Um, though, yeah, since Dialga does not have room for Protect, or at least the Float did not think it had um, room for Protect, we're actually just going for the Trick Room here and also go for the Explosion, I think. Now, if my opponent um, is able to KO Dialga right here, then um, yeah, we are down to our last two months and we won't have Trick Room up. Since, yeah, if Dialga gets KO'd here, then it will also mean that there won't be any Trick Room. But we're actually seeing the Protect coming out from Salamence, so that is good to see here. Ground, though, also going for the Protect, so that means we will sacrifice Landorus, but we will also get up the Trick Room for free, essentially, if you neglect the fact that we just lost our ladders, which is three, like it's one fourth of our team. But three fourths are left here. So, um, considering that our Smurgle is level 13 though, and our ground is level 49, in terms of level, that's quite a few levels that we just exploded into nothing. Anyway, the question is do we go out into ground? And I don't think we can do that. I think we have to go into Smurgo. Like, because if we if we went out into Groudon, we had to hope that he switches out his Groudon, since he protected the turn before. But if he was bulky enough to, for example, take an Earth Power, then he could just stay in there. 
or he could also just expect us to be uh, physical and also just stay in and then I don't know we're just in a lot of trouble though I think we could see a switch into Ferrothorn here probably so um, in my head I'm thinking whether we could go for either the switch into Groudon with the Dialga or if we set up gravity here I think we're switching into Groudon though then again since we're the fastest one on the field, if for whatever reason he decides to switch into Kyogre, there won't be any um, rain up for us. But I think, hmm, yeah, I think we want to go into Groudon and also go for the Dark Void, since yeah, we know for a fact that neither of his mons can have um, Lumberry or anything like that. So yeah, I would be surprised if he just stayed in here with both mons, since yeah, we do have the potential to KO stuff with Draco Meteor with Dialga, and yeah, since we're level 13, we can of course underspeed Ferrothorn into Trick Room. So even if he has like Lumberry Ferrothorn and switches that in right now, we can just go for another Dark Void the next turn. But he just decides to stay in with both mons. Wow. Okay. Um. Yeah. To be completely honest, I did not expect that, and luckily enough, we hit both Dark Voids, so that is a good thing. So, um, both of his mons are asleep, that is great, and mm, we could go for something like Endeavor and Precipice Blades, but uh, I don't want to deal with, like, I don't know, potential miss chance if we go for Endeavor and Fire Punch on the Salamence, there's a chance that probably he switches into his, um, into his Kyogre. So, I could just go for a Substitute here, I think, and Endeavor. Or we could go for Gravity and Precipice Blades. Or I could Substitute and then Precipice Blades the next turn. Or I could also just Gravity and Precipice Blades this turn. But, um... Hmm. Do we want to have a sub up? It could help, it could help. But then again, chances are that maybe he wakes up with one of his mods. But then again, maybe he just goes for a Protect. Yeah, but we want to deal as much damage as possible. We go for Precipice Blades and Gravity. Yeah, it's really difficult with this team, because basically, by going for the Trick Room setup and sacrificing Landers and so on, you're probably, like, going almost all in-ish. So, that means, like, I don't know, if you can't KO most of your opponent's mons during the time Trick Room is up, then you're, the chances are pretty high that you would just lose. Uh, Groudon here, unfortunately, gets the one turn wake up and will launch the Earth Pour here. And, yeah, we cannot take that, so that is probably game as our ground goes down. Salamence though stays asleep. So maybe gravity and sub would have been nice then next turn we could have gone for like if he wakes up we could have gone for endeavor and precipice plates or even going for endeavor and sub maybe and then gravity precipice plates. Uh, it's tough to decide but um, it looks like that we will lose this one due to that wake up here. And yeah that's like I think Groudon is like really a problem for this team because it threatens Dialga pretty badly and yeah my opponent reading nicely into there into our uh, explosion into our first turn so yeah he made a clever move going for that uh, double protect and I don't know yeah I don't think there's too much we can do I'm guessing he would protect or switch a Groudon here to stall out um, the trick room yeah as he does so we should be able to get a KO on Salamence unless it wakes up. Yep, okay, it stays asleep. But I don't think there's too much left we can do. So Endeavor will come out. Yeah, also not having uh, Moody here means that there's no chance for us going for, I don't know, Evasion Boost or anything. And it actually hangs on there. Um, survives so that Iron Head. So yeah, right here, level 1 Smurgle definitely would have um, been enough for that KO. But since we are level 13, that is not the case. And um, yeah, comment of the day once again coming up from Jamie Boyd, who gives us more reasons for why level 13 Smurga could be nice. If you endeavor something and then you um, get to go for two hammer arms instead of one, uh, you get to underspeed the primals uh, since yeah, you need two speed drops for that. But that is not actually true, or is it? Uh, how fast does? Yeah, actually that's true. Okay, yeah, actually that's true. <laughs> so yeah, that is one more reason for why level 13 Smurga could be nice. Um, another reason is that with level 13, you can actually survive two foul plays from the likes of Leopard, since, yeah, the attack is just so small and so on. Uh, yeah, you can survive 
to fall face. So that is kind of neat as well. And you can also take a faint um, plus weather damage from uh, Raichu that is like timid with no attack and so on. But yeah, that's just on the sidelines. So um, we, did, we put Thunderous to sleep, we got rid of Salamence, but Trick Room is also over. So there's not too much left we can do here. Uh, if we crit Thunderous right here, hmm, maybe, yeah, I don't know, um, yeah, that is like the, the big, big downfall of this team, um, if your opponent knows kind of what you're about to do, um, if he, if he knows about the explosion and you don't get up, any, like, you don't get off any damage at all, then, yeah, Earth Power just does so much today, I guess, well. Um, then, yeah, you don't really have too many great ways to come back into a game. And even though we got Trick Room up, maybe it would have been better to go for that um, substitute play. So, maybe next time I will go for substitute instead. Also, like, um, the moveset of Smurgle could probably be changed quite a bit. As, um, yeah, there's stuff like, I don't know, White Guard or Follow Me, Spiky Shield, that is very tempting to try out as well. Since, um, yeah, uh, Duffo gave it Endeavor, so it can do some stuff, and can dish out at least a little bit of damage. But, yeah, as you can see, um, like, I don't know, sometimes you, there's just nothing you can do, and right here, Thunder is going for the Thunderbolt, should be enough to knock out the Dialga, as it is, and, yep, that will mean that we lose this game. Huh. So yeah, if our opponent did not get the one turn wake up, I think we would have been like in a decent position if like Kyogre was his last mon, then yeah, Gravity Precipice Blade is just really really strong against a lot of teams. And it's really hard since most of the time your answer to ground type attacks are those flying types, but with Gravity you can of course not use them. So um, yeah, really strong team kind of thing. Also, like, uh, with Bronzong, a lot of people have been doing that, like, like Poke Alex or Cybertron, or, um, I think Nikolai Zielinski also had that at regionals. Um, yeah, like, sometimes, especially in those, like, dual primal teams, if you get up Gravity and Trick Room and you have your, like, Groudon out or your Kyogre, that's just so, so strong. You can't miss, you have Origin Pulse and, um, Presence Blades to deal so much damage and, yeah, the only really good way to overcome that is probably white guard. So I expect white guard to be a little bit more common if those teams, um, yeah, get more popular because, I don't know, the, I, I tried to look for a counter to like, um, dual primal trick room team and like, I don't know, it just came up with some very, very obscure stuff. I'm not sure if I want to re reveal that yet because maybe it has a little bit of potential, but like, um... I don't know, so yeah, maybe I want to try that out um, in, at regionals, because in like one month I also have a regionals tournament, probably, I'm not sure if I'm going, but um, in Belgium, in Lanaken. So, yeah, but we'll see how the meta will evolve until then. Uh, if we will see a ban on something like Dark Void, which most people are looking forward to, I think. Um, but yeah, whatever. So our next opponent here, from Japan, with a rating of 16 and 90. So, he has a team that has um, Kyogre and Evelatal as his dual um, uh, primals, or dual restricted mods, I'm sorry. And we also do see that Espion coming out once again. So, second Espion here after that last episode that could obviously spell Doom for our Dark Void tricks. So, maybe we have to go with a different route here. Though, hmm. Kangaskhan actually looks kind of nice here in this matchup. Mm hmm. So maybe Kang is Kanda and Dialga, and then have Groudon and Smurga in the back? Or do we even want to bring Smurga? Whimsicott could also be Taunt, and then that would also be pretty bad. Hmm. <laughs> I think he, yeah, like, whenever he sees Smurga, he probably wants to bring Espion. Though maybe it's also some kind of, like, team preview trick, tricking your opponent into thinking that there will definitely be the Espion. But, um, seeing that he also has the dual Mega option in Kang is Kanda and Salamence, I'm pretty sure that he will bring at least one between Whimsicott and Espeon, since bringing both the Kangaskhan and Salamence would probably be pretty questionable. So, yeah, I think Kangaskhan and Dialga is actually what we're going for. Nah, or the Lando. Yeah, I think 
actually we're uh, nah, yeah I think we're actually going to go with the Lando since we do have the metal herb so even if he leads with uh, whimsy card and even if he has sash and even if he has like I don't know Kangas kind of whimsy card lead um, Landorus should still be able to support uh, the trick room coming up so my first thought that was that we need Kangas Khan to ensure trick room is going up but yeah we do have the metal herb so yeah, we should be fine even if he goes for that. And if he leads with Espion, that would be even better because we can just explode in the land. That looks like Whimsy Cut and End. Oh no, it's actually Salamence and Espion. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, Intimidate will go off for my opponent here, but we don't lead with Smurgle, so that is nice. Um, yeah, I think with that specific Smurgle moveset, it's not the wisest choice to lead it. Especially against a team that has Kangas Constance. Yeah, we are not running Spiky Shield or anything like that. So we can't really protect ourselves. Uh, I could go for a U-turn, but I'm not sure if that would knock out the SPN. Yeah, since we are the slowest mon in the field, actually maybe U-turn is the play here, instead of going for the explosion. Since it basically does the same thing. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going for the U-turn here. So, first time in... When I was using this team, I'm actually not going to just explode here. But um, yeah, since Landorus will be outsped by both the Salamence and the Espion anyway, uh, yeah, we can U-turn out to at least keep um, our four Mons alive this time. As he actually goes for the Protect, and ooh, Landorus outspeeding that Espion. Hmm. That is interesting. And we're seeing the item here. Is it a Citrus Berry? Yes, yeah, Citrus Berry being revealed here as the item for that Espion, so I'm not really sure about what to expect here from that. Hmm, do we just switch into ground now? Yeah, I guess we would. Yeah, since Smurgo still threatened by that magic bounce ability. So yeah, we're going into ground, giving up the weather basically, since my opponent most likely has Kyogre and Evaldal in the back. But yeah, since we're since our main goal is to spam Precipice Blades anyway, uh, it's not too important to have, have like the weather up. But let's see what Aspen goes for. Uh, I'm not really sure what to expect here. And it's the Yawn coming out, okay. Into the Dialga. Hmm. So, I don't know, Protect Yawn, that seems like such a passive play. Uh, we will be able to get up Trick Room, we get up a lot of damage on that Aspen, and things are looking pretty nicely, I would say. So... Hmm, not too sure what to think about that. Um, hmm. Now the question is, will my opponent just, um, like, sacrifice, or is he willing to sacrifice his Salamence? Because I could, of course, go for a Raikou Meteor to knock it out, but since we got Yawned, I also want to switch out to not fall asleep, so he could just stay in with his Salamence as well. But, hmm. or do we, we could, we could just press up his blades here, I think. Um, if he goes into his Kyogre, that would be the perfect scenario, um, predicting us to go for like a Draco Meteor, or if he just, I don't know, stays in and we KO the Espeon, that would also be fine, since then we can go for Dark Voids. And actually no Protect coming out, or no Switch, so yeah, Precipice Blades should be able to pick up the KO on that Espeon. Oh, unless it is super, super bulky, and it looks like that is the case here, as it goes for a Psychic here on the ground, and that actually does quite a fair amount of damage. And also the Hyper Voice. Wow, so that is certainly not the turn I was expecting. Huh. So, that really changed quite a bit of stuff. Maybe Fire Punch would have been the better play, but then again, I don't know. Switching into Kyogre could have been something there for my opponent as well. But now, um, yeah, we are in a little bit of trouble. Since I can't get two knockouts the next turn, and I can't go for Dark Void either. So... My play would probably be to fake out the Salamence and Precipice Blades, the Espion, or just Fire Punch the Espion to knock it out. Uh, but if he has Protect, then we would just lose a turn, and that would be really bad. So I think we're actually... Hmm. Nah, I don't think we can risk it. I don't think we can risk going for like Gravity, but he goes for the Protect. Uh, so Gravity was the play after all. But we will at least be able to get rid of that Espion, so we can go for um, Dark Void the next turn, unless his last one, or like, unless he has Whimsicott in the back, because then he could go for Prankster Taunt or something. 
But let's see. Maybe there's just Kairu coming in though. Then we would probably switch Groudon into Dialga. Hmm. Yep, that looks like Kyogre. And here it is. Hmm, so no gravity up for us yet, which is a little bit concerning. But not, a, not the end of the world either, because as long as we hit our Dark Voids right here, we should be in a decent position to set up Trick Room um, for a second time. And yeah, I think that's actually what I want to do here. Just go for the Dark Void and switch Groudon back out into Dialga. Now we really have to land um, the Dark Void on at least one of his mons. Um, if he goes for Water Spout and we miss um, with Dark Void, that would be really bad. Yeah, we can KO the Salamans this turn, um, even if we went for like Endeavor, I don't know, like Precipice Plates can't hit it since Gravity is not up, Fire Punch can't hit it since the Kyogre is out, and whew, looks like Dark Void, at least the animation goes off, so at least um, hit one target, but actually hits both, so that is just perfect. Kyogre falls asleep, and Salamans is soon to follow. So, yeah, that went as well as it could have gone, and we still have all of our Mons. And um, should be the last turn of Trick Room, so as long as um, he stays asleep here, we should be fine. And KOing, I think we want to go after the Salamence. Yeah, I think we want to go after the Salamence. We could actually set up Gravity. But no, if we get rid of the Salamence here, that would be really good. Actually, maybe Draco Meteoring the Salamence and Endeavoring the Kyogre would have been better. But fortunately enough, he does not wake up, does not get off the Protect. And yeah, I think, yeah, Endeavor Endeavor on the Kyogre and Iron Heading on the Anto the Sal uh, sorry, Draco Meteoring the Salamence would have been the better play. Because then he needs, um, basically he needs two um, turn one wake ups to get anything out of this turn. But um, yeah, he didn't get a single one and both his mons stay asleep. And yeah, Trick Room is over, but that is fine. Ivaljal Iv will come out here, but... Hmm. Uh, what do we go for? We could even just switch into Groudon, but then we really lack offensive pressure and setting up Trick Room is not as great if we don't have Groudon anymore. So yeah, Endeavor really would have been way better than what I did. Hmm. Yeah, that was probably a mistake, but I think we should still be fine though. He probably goes for like Snarl and Water Spout. Actually... Actually let's go for the Draco and not the Shugro. As he goes for the Ice Beam, hmm, questionable choice. Maybe predicting the Ground to come out here, but I don't think there was too much of a reason for me. Since, yeah, Snarl would just have knocked it out. But interesting to note, his Groudon, uh, sorry, his Kyogre actually outspeeds his Evaljal, indicating that this is like a more bulky variant of Evaljal. And yeah, that actually is just fine by me. Since, um, yeah, I went for the Draco here, since we do have Landorus in the back still, so I can go for the Draco Meteor right here, though that actually did not as much as I would have hoped to do. And now I'll switch into Landorus, go for the Explosion and Trick Room. So, yeah, we get a little bit more out of that. Though, maybe that actually wasn't the cleverest choice here, since his Ivata seems to be really, really bulky and probably can take the explosion. Though, yeah, maybe not. Maybe we're fine. But then we still need to worry about um, how to KO his mons the next turn. And yeah, this could come down to the last few turns. Uh, Draco Meteor definitely not doing as much as I would have liked here on the Ultra. Maybe just Iron Heading would have been better. But yeah, with Telepathy as nature, you have to be modest. So that is actually hindering um, yeah, the damage output of Iron Head quite significantly. But seems like no Protect is coming out here. So let's see how much Explosion is going to do here. Uh, okay, Evolta goes down and... Um, even though Kyogre hangs in there, I don't think Ice Beam should be enough to knock out our Dialga, but let's see. Basically, that's what it comes down to. There is the Ice Beam. But yeah, we should be fine. Yeah, we can take that. And Trick Room will go up, so... Um, yeah, Groudon and Dialga will stare down that lone Kyogre. Yeah, that actually 
got um, quite a bit more, like quite a bit closer than I would have liked it to be. Um, endeavoring the Kyogre the turn we went for the double target into the Salamence definitely worth the play. Since yeah, I was like I was a little bit hesitant because I th I thought like yeah I don't want to lower my Dialga's damage output and by going for the Draco Meteor and I don't want to risk it missing. But yeah, Dialga is not really there to be a damage dealer anyway, and even if I went for the Draco, I don't know, I don't think that would have mattered too much with the um, special attack decrease. But um, yeah, well, fortunately enough, we managed to um, still come back here and secure the victory, so one and one in this episode. And I don't know, I think you can really see um, when this team can perform very well, uh, when you get up everything, get the Trick Room up. In this game, we also um, still... Uh, conserved our landers for a little bit longer and in the end I was able to get off that winning explosion but that Aspion being so bulky and so on that also I don't know was a little bit like not something I expected. So yeah that'll be it for today's episode. Definitely make sure to check out Wolfie's um, YouTube channel. The link will be somewhere definitely in the description though and um, yeah I don't know looking forward to playing some more games during the week. Um, hope you have a great day and see you soon.